Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And this is a lunchtime edition of the State of the Saints podcast. So last night, um, during Super Bowl Sunday, um, right after the game, I did a live on YouTube and I answered the questions for some of the, the subscribers of the YouTube channel. And if you watch YouTube videos, please subscribe to the State of the Saints podcast YouTube channel. I would really appreciate that. So I thought it was only right that I would uh, go live on Facebook and give people opportunity to ask or make comments about the New Orleans Saints. Um, any questions or concerns they may have about the team. Um, I, I just posted a video um, that focused on free agency and what I feel like the Saints need to address in the off season in free agency. So uh, I'm, I hope that you all take the time out. It's probably like a five minute video. Uh, y'all know my video is not that long, <laughs> but it's just talking a little bit about, you know, the direction I feel like the Saints need to go in. Uh, first off, um, I want to mention uh, the State of the Game podcast. Um, if you're a fan of sports, uh, all uh, hot topics in sports. Um, if you like basketball, if you like hearing about other NFL teams, uh, you can check out the State of the Game podcast as well. I mean, I post different videos similar to the ones in the State of the Saints podcast Facebook page. Um, so thank you all very much for those that already have followed the State of the uh, Game podcast on uh, YouTube as well as Facebook. So um, you can check it out. Um, I just posted my very first podcast, um, audio podcast for the State of the Game. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm open for any suggestions that you all may have, man. You know, um, I understand that you make this channel. You all made the State of the Saints podcast as successful as it is. And, um, you know, I'm asking you all for help once again to make the State of the Game podcast just as successful. I always tell people, man, I'm just, I'm an overachiever when it comes to the Facebook game, you know. <laughs> I mean, I did not expect for, you know, the State of the Saints podcast to be as successful on Facebook as it has been. But I know it wouldn't be without the Who That Nation. So um, I appreciate you all, you know, and I, I can say very confidently, you know, I'm not about numbers or anything like that, man. I'm about quality over quantity, you know, so... I, I posted that this morning, so I appreciate all of the quality that I have inside of this group, you know, because you all make this group what it is, and I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. So if you have any questions, once again, comment down below. This is your show. Um, I'm not going to monopolize it. You know, you already know where I stand as far as my topic for today, so um, make your comments or any concerns that you may have about the team. Um, Justin, what's going on, man? Shouts out to Justin, man, a real supporter of the State of the Saints and also, man, one of my good Facebook friends, man. Shouts out to you, man. Thank you for your support. He says, bro, I think Saints need to go after offensive line first. Uh, get a guard because Andrews Pete has uh, keep having hot and cold moments. Uh, yeah, I agree with that, Justin. Um, I think Andrews Pete job is indeed done in the Crescent City. I think the Saints are not going to sign Andrews Pete back. But the best thing, you know, for Andrews Pete is for him to lead the New Orleans Saints because Andrews Pete did something throughout his time with the New Orleans Saints that most offensive linemen don't get opportunity to do, especially when they're starters. He played at least three positions on the offensive line. So he can honestly, you know, name his asking price. And I think he's probably going to move to the left tackle position the position that he played when he was in college, and he was really successful doing so. And we all know that uh, after you pay the quarterback, you pay the left tackle, the guy to protect his blind side. I mean, you watched the blind side movie with Michael Orr. You know, that's how we found that out. But um, the left tackle position is one of the um, most uh, sought-after positions because it's so hard to find a good left tackle. So nine times out of ten, Andrews Pete is going to be somebody left tackle, and he's going to really be a high-paid left tackle. Um, probably going to be smoking mirrors when it comes to the bread because, you know, I feel like Drew Brees kind of made him better than what he actually was. You know, Drew Brees doesn't give up sacks. Drew Brees throws the ball away. Drew Brees tried to get that ball out of his hand as quickly as possible, so it makes the offensive line much better than what they actually are. Um, I think that's one of the issues that the Saints had against the Minnesota Vikings game. I think they proved that... It's more Drew Brees and what he, he does versus what they actually do. 
Um, and also Nick Easton. I mean, Nick Easton. Uh, that's what I'm about to talk about, Justin. Nick Easton. <laughs> I feel like Nick Easton is a guy who can um, replace Andrews Pete. The Saints signed him to like a four-year deal. This is a guy that came from the Pittsburgh Steelers, a, a, a real tough and rugged type offensive team. And also the Baltimore Ravens, also a tough and rugged offensive team. Uh, Nick Easton did a really good job filling in for Andrews Pete when he was down with the, with the arm injury. Uh, when he broke his arm. So I have a lot of confidence in Nick Easton, and um, he's only going to get better. And we all know that the offensive line is about what? It's about chemistry. So you can't just plug and play on the offensive line. Guys got to understand what the other guy's doing. I mean, they got to work in sync. So I think some of the issues that you saw with Nick Easton, if you had an issue with him, was because he doesn't have the, the same chemistry with uh, some of those other guys. So I feel like that, that played a role. But um, going into year two with the New Orleans Saints, I think that Nick Easton would play much better. He's a smart guy. I mean, he went to Harvard, for God's sakes. I mean, come on now. I mean, you got to give him credit <laughs> where credit is due. I mean, you can't be, uh, you know, lacking and graduating from Harvard. So um, Nick Easton, I think he's a really smart football player. He was just one of those guys that just couldn't find a home because, you know, um, it wasn't the fact that he was a bad football player. It was just um, the players that – um, that he was um, trying to uh, get a job versus, I mean, these guys were like all pro talents. I mean, you look out there um, in Baltimore, you know, elite talent. You look out there for the Steelers, elite talent. Most of those guys that he was trying to uh, uh, compete against, nine times out of ten, those guys are on a, they're on a collision course, man, for the Hall of Fame. So, um, shouts out to Nick Easton. I think he will be the answer. Uh, please, we just want Shakira and J-Lo again for halftime show Super Bowl 55. Uh, Edwin uh, Caban, um, thank you very much. Yeah, I really enjoyed the halftime show. I didn't have a problem with it. You know, I feel like people are always just trying to find issues with everything. People are always trying to uh, compare uh, different things, you know. Um, I think that this was a really good halftime show. Um, I know a lot of people, you know, they love Beyonce and anybody that's not Beyonce, they got a problem with it. I have nothing against Beyonce, great performer, but there are other great performers out there. And I find it weird that people get mad at, you know, uh, J-Lo and saying that she's not Beyonce. But who do you think helped select Shakira and um, J-Lo for the halftime show? Uh, Jay-Z and Beyonce. Uh, Jay-Z is also partnering with the NFL right now. And um, they put him, like, head over, like, you know, uh, selecting talent for the Super Bowl. So who do you think selected that talent? So I think people need to think about that for a second before you start criticizing. So the great, you know, Beyonce uh, selected J-Lo and Shakira to perform for the Super Bowl. Okay, so there you have it. Thought it was pretty good, though. I mean, people talking about... Uh, Jennifer Lopez not being able to keep up the lady 50 years old so the fact that she's out there getting dancing and and celebrating and you know what I'm saying and swinging on a pole at 50 years old I mean I know a lot of 50 year old can't even they feet don't even leave the ground so <laughs> she did a good job uh we cannot do uh throw deep against Minnesota yeah Ralph that's true um the Saints can't throw, um, throw the ball deep uh, it's been an issue for the past couple years. Uh, you know, man, we look, I, I don't want to seem like I'm just picking on Drew Brees. I know a lot of people on this Facebook page think I, I hate Drew Brees for all of a sudden for some apparent reason that that is beyond me. But I mean, it is what it is. I mean, his arm strength has diminished. I mean, he's that doesn't mean that he's not a, a, a really good pat thrower of the football. He really is, man. He's one of the most accurate quarterbacks of all time. He just can't th get the ball down the field the way he once did. I mean, back in the days when he was throwing the ball to Meacham and Devery Henderson and Joe Morgan in them. You know, he just can't get it down there anymore. And and teams are not fearing the Saints offensively the way they once did because um, they don't respect the, the fact that they can throw the ball down the field. They play close to the line of scrimmage, and they, they just, you know, pray for the best. You know, they feel like they can get a couple three and outs, get pressure on Drew Brees, and you know, they feel like they can, you know, match up against the, the our defense really well. So, uh, you know, there's no knock against Drew Brees. I mean, Father Time is undefeated, man. None of us are what we used to be. You know, I remember, you know, when I was like 19 years old, you know, I can jump out of the gym. 
You know, I, I mean, I'm not bragging or boasting, but I can jump so high, you know what I'm saying, to dunk a basketball, I can just get over the rim and just drop it in there. But at 33, you know what I'm saying, I can't jump as high as I once did. I'm not as fast as I once was. You know, it just happens, man. It's life. You know, it's, it's not a knock. You know, you're, you're the same person, but regardless of if you want to do things that you once did, I mean, Father Time has a way of saying, no, you can't do it anymore. So, I mean, Drew Brees, I mean, he makes up for it with his decision making. I mean, for the last three years, I mean, he hasn't been throwing over, I mean, turning over the football for the past three years. Um, he has led he has led the league when it comes to not turning the ball over. And we all seen the Saints um, set an NFL record for least turnovers in the season. So that's not a problem. He makes up for his, uh, you know, uh, efficiencies, you know. So, um, yeah. Uh, Earl, what's going on, man? Thank you for checking out the live. Uh, Drew can't throw deep no more, man. I'm not. Uh, I mean, I, I said my piece, man. I don't want. I don't want to keep on beating a dead horse, man. We we know what it is with Drew Brees. We know what it is, Leslie. You're absolutely right. And shouts out to Leslie, man. Always inboxing, always keeping a uh, good commentary in the inbox, man. And if y'all have any questions or concern, or y'all wanna, you know, talk, you know, y'all can always inbox me, man. I'm not one of them people that. Don't look at inboxes and, and don't respond back to the people that make this page what it is. So shouts out to Leslie, man. I saw I saw your uh, inbox, man. Didn't get an opportunity to respond back to you, and I apologize uh, for that. But once I get some downtime and, um, you know, I'm at the station right now getting prepared for my uh, 2 o'clock uh, afternoon show, uh, man, we'll sit down and talk Saints a little bit more. Uh, Julius uh, Cooper says, what are the chances of drafting Jefferson for, uh, from LSU? It's a strong chance, Julius. Uh, my brother E, um, I seen him mention that. Uh, sometimes when y'all see the State of the Saints podcast logo, sometimes that's not me posting, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> my brother is also an administrator as well. So sometimes like you, you might think that is me, it's probably not. He He's also an administrator he mentioned that, you know, about the Justin Jefferson thing. So I'm not crazy um, when I talked about Travis Benjamin and, and also Damian Amendola as a as free agent acquisition for the Saints and then turned around and started talking about other players. That was my brother, okay? I didn't lose my mind. <laughs> so I know some people are probably thinking, man, God dog, man, he just said those two guys right there and those two cornerbacks there. Now he's talking about helping C.J. Garner-Johnson. Yeah, that's my brother right there as well. He's also an administrator. So sometimes when he posts, you know, you're going to see the State of the Saints podcast logo as well. But back to your question, Julius, I do think it's a strong chance. Uh, Justin Jefferson is a really good wide receiver. He's only going to get better. Um, I, I think that um, a lot of those guys, we really didn't see what was in their arsenal because the LSU wide receiver core was just so talented, man. Between um, Jefferson, Marshall, and Chase, I mean, and honestly throw Moss in there, I mean, my goodness, man. I mean, this guy's only going to get better like when the spotlight really gets on him. So whoever gets Jeff Jefferson, rather it be the Saints or some other team, um, he's going to uh, really um, show that he is an elite receiver because all of those guys are good in their own right. I just feel like uh, when you have three wide receivers that can just take over a game the way the LSU Tigers do, some, some of the guys get overshadowed. And honestly, he was one of those guys. Because I feel like Chase and Marshall, you know, they were kind of, um, you know, in the spotlight a little bit more than Jefferson was. But I think once he, uh, you know, uh, leaves LSU and he gets he gets the opportunity to do his own thing, he's going to shine. But there's a strong possibility that the Saints can get him. I think there's a couple more wide receivers that teams are going to be looking at. Uh, for example, C.D. Lamb out of Oklahoma uh, is one. Uh, Justin, uh, I mean, uh, Jared, uh, what is it, Judy? I adjusted Judy or Jared Judy or whatever, you know, I think people are looking at him and also Ruggs, you know, Henry Ruggs the third. So um, I think there's a strong chance and not to mention um, or a sound note uh, out of uh, Colorado. If I butchered his name, I apologize. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So uh, Justin, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, Justin Jefferson can be be one of those guys who who can slip to the Saints. Uh, TJ, do me a favor, answer this. Is the Saints a top 10 team in your opinion? Oh, man, Michael, absolutely, man. The Saints are definitely a top 10 team. I mean, even right now, I mean, the, the betting for next year's Super Bowl, the Saints are ranked number five, I think. There's an 11 to 1 chance that they can win the Super Bowl. So the Saints are still a top 10 team, man. Don't, don't get it twisted. Um, the Saints are still a really good football team. 
Do I feel like the window is starting to slowly close? Absolutely. But that does not mean that they don't have the pieces in place to make a run. Um, I think that they need to not squander some of these opportunities that that are presenting themselves to them because eventually you're going to be the team, you know, that people are saying, what if about, you know, you're going to be those Houston Oilers back in the day. Y'all know when the Houston Oilers had that air raid type offense with Warren Moon and, and Haywood Jeffries and guys like that, you know, they were able to put points up on the board. And a lot of people used to think that they were going to make that Super Bowl run. And all of a sudden, you know, they end up running, you know, up against the Buffalo Bills and they end up losing and squandering those opportunities. You don't want to see that from the New Orleans Saints, you know. And it's sad because the Saints, the, the problems that have been eluding them for the past couple of years, it seemed like they fixed it. But now it just seems like the, the offense is starting to sputter. I mean, when those uh, offensive teams that they had in the past was out there really making plays, the defense was out there just costing teams the game. And now it seems like the offense can't get themselves together until late parts in the game. And, and um, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, the, the, they're making – the game more complicated than what it got to be. But, Michael, to answer your question, absolutely the Saints are a top-10 team. Ralph asks, uh, uh, we're, a play we're a playoff team, not a Super Bowl team with Breeze. That's a comment. Thank you very much, Ralph. That's, uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, respect your opinion, bro. I actually agree. Thank you, Robert, man. I appreciate you for checking you know, out the podcast. Uh, Leslie, man, hey, bro, thank you very much, man, for real. Like, that's the highlight of my day, people, you know, asking questions and stuff like that. You know, I enjoy doing that. I mean, you all make this this podcast because a lot of the questions that people ask me, I turn into videos and, you know, I give my opinion about it. You know, so if you have questions, you know, keep it, keep them coming. I, I have no problem with that at all. Um, I think that uh, the New Orleans Saints, uh, I don't think that. Once again, the window is closing for this team. I think they're going to be uh, really good down the line. I think Jeff Ireland has done an outstanding job. And I don't think people understand the importance of Jeff Ireland. You probably heard his name before. He's the assistant general manager of the New Orleans Saints. He came to the team in 2015. Um, this is when the team was struggling. Um, they had like issues when it came to the draft. He fixed those problems, man. I mean, and I think the first draft that he was a part of was like the 2016 draft because he came like, I think maybe like in the midseason, um, they, they picked him up. And I think the first uh, draft pick that he picked up was Brandon Cooks. And um, rather you like Brandon Cooks or not, he was a really good receiver for the New Orleans Saints. Um, couldn't really get that yak, but I mean, he he was one of those guys that, that contributed to the Saints in a big way. And then, of course, the next year, they end up uh, getting Michael Thomas. No, matter of fact, the 2015 season, that's when they got Brandon Cooks. Yeah, so that was his first season. Huh? Yeah, so he he got Brandon Cooks in 2015. He got uh, Michael Thomas, you know, in 2016. Then you got the, the classic, uh, you know, history-making 2017 class. So this guy's doing an outstanding job. And I think as long as Jeff Ireland is the head of scouting and the assistant GM of the New Orleans Saints, I think that uh, they're going to be successful, man. I, I think I don't think people give this man enough credit for what he has done for this team. I mean, just just combined by him just being with the team, the Saints have generated um, a total of eight Pro Bowls combined um, by his draft picks, um, an offensive rookie and a defensive rookie of the year. Um, I think what two All Pro um, first team All Pro selections uh, with um, with Harris and Ramchick. I mean, and also you know Michael Thomas. So you add that in, so. I mean, this guy has drafted guys that, that can play right away and, and on historic paces can put, be possibly guys that be considered for the Hall of Fame. So this guy's doing an outstanding job. Uh, so I got to give props to Jeff Ireland, man. The Saints need to hide him somewhere. They, they do. They need to They need to hide him somewhere uh, because a team is going to try to find this guy and make him a general manager. And, man, some team is going to be really, really good. Is there a Patrick Mahone type quarterback in the upcoming draft? Uh, Steve, yes, there is. Um, there's a quarterback by the name of Jordan Love out of Utah State. I don't know if you watched the video that I put out about Jordan Love. And there's also a video that's circulating on the State of the Saints podcast Facebook page. 
Um, it has a couple highlights of him. Um, he's a guy that comparing to the, to be the next Patrick Mahomes. He has a really strong arm. Um, he kind of struggled this uh, past year. He had 20 touchdowns, 17 interceptions. So a lot of people are saying like, uh, maybe he not it. But when you lose four uh, starting offensive linemen and you lose uh, probably 55% close to even 60% of your coaching staff, of course, you're going to suffer. So um, a lot of people feel like he has all the tools to be successful. He just has to go to the right situation. And it's the same way with Patrick Mahomes, man. Patrick Mahomes, I mean, he lost more games at Texas Tech than he won. The thing about it is he was able to get drafted by Andy Reid, and Andy Reid was able to maximize his potential. And now you see what he's actually doing. So I think if Jordan Love was to go to a uh, offense similar to the Saints or uh, uh, offensive uh, driven team, you know, that uh, has an offensive uh, minded coach, I think he will be successful. That's one guy that a lot of people are comparing to Patrick Mahomes. And um, according to uh, Mel Kuyper's uh, mock, mock draft, he has the Saints selected him at pick number 24. Uh, good question, Steve. Uh, Ralph says he's the scouting director. Yeah, um, Ralph, he is the scouting director. He's the head of scouting for the New Orleans Saints, but he also serves as the assistant general manager as well. Uh, that that guy, uh, that love guy is like Patrick Mahomes. Yep, Mark, he's a, a lot of people are comparing him to Patrick. And he had a good senior bowl, man. I mean, he uh, threw a pass down the field that could have easily been completed. Um, you know, he, he dropped it in there where it needed to be. So, I mean, he has um, elite arm strength. He just has to work on his accuracy a little bit more, and he has to work on his decision-making. So if he goes to the right situation, I think he should be okay. Uh, he's a dog. Don't speak too loud. Yeah. I mean, he is, man. I mean, I mean, this this is the thing, folks. Uh, we always, you know, take time to criticize people when they're doing stuff wrong. I mean, give a guy credit when he's doing things right. I've always been a fan of Jeff Ireland. I, I mean, I don't know if you all watch videos you know in the past but i mean i've always mentioned his name because i know what this guy does i mean this guy worked tirelessly um trying to get guys in a building that can contribute in a big way and he's done just that he, he done just that i mean the guy just turned around and resurrected on uh, the new orleans saints uh you know when it comes to the draft because the saints were struggling like some of those draft picks the saints were getting i mean these guys weren't doing absolutely nothing I mean, just a waste of space and time and and everything else, you know. But uh, he came in, and now, I mean, just look at it, man. majority of the Saints players, and the reason why the Saints have been so successful is because they got all these young players, and they're playing on rookie deals. And it, and it, it has a lot to do with Jeff Ireland going out there, looking at these guys and finding diamonds in the rough. Uh, what outside linebacker can we pick up uh that will have an instant impact man that's a good question i would have to look at the list i would have to look at the list of uh linebackers to be honest with you um if and my question um to you mark would be um are you talking about in free agency uh are you talking about um are you talking about in the nfl draft so i can answer your uh question correctly and i apologize because i'm in front of a computer so i'm gonna try to see if I see any free agent linebackers that I, I would think that the Saints would actually, um, you know, like or, or, or ones that I do like. So give me a, just give me a chance just for a second to see well, the list. Uh, man, this is a this is a really good list. This is a really good list as far as um, free agents, especially at the wide receiver position. But I, I mentioned that, like I said, check out the uh, the free agent video that I just put out um, that focuses on um, what what direction I want I want the Saints to go in. Okay, um, just looking at this list, I just pulled it up, Mark. Thank you very much. Um, I see Dante Fowler on this list. I think he's going to be asking for way too much money. Um, let's see, uh, Mario Addison um, from Carolina. Um, uh, he's a really good linebacker. Didn't really get an opportunity to play that much. I see Danny Trevathan on the list. Um, Danny Trevathan was really good with the Denver Broncos. He kind of fell off uh, with the Bears. Uh, he couldn't stay healthy. Kyle Van Noy, um, he's a really smart player. He's a short tackler, but he struggles uh, in a passing game. Uh, Terrell Suggs, I mean, he's 38 years old. Uh, Bruce Irvin, he's a little bit up there in age. Lorenzo Alexander from Buffalo, I really like him. Good kid, but 
Uh, I mean, good guy, but he's 37 years old. Sean Lee um, is a guy that is a really good linebacker, but once again, we all know he can't stay healthy. Uh, Bakevius Mango, y'all all know him from LSU, um, but he didn't turn out to be the player that a lot of people thought he was going to be. Just looking at this list, Mark, it, it, not too many guys stand out on this list. Um, you can probably see Reggie Ragland because he's so young. I would think about somebody like that. Uh, but besides that, I'm not looking at a bunch of guys that I would just move heaven and earth to try to do, uh, try to get. Um, I think you probably have to look at a guy in a draft, maybe a young player that can come in. But I'm really excited to see what Caden Ellis can do. Caden Ellis had a really good training camp, and he really did good in the preseason, but he ended up going on IR. So I want to see what he can do, man. He was a young player, and he was drafted in the seventh round, and he was part of the, he was going to be part of the starting rotation before he ended up getting hurt. So I'm interested to see what he can bring to the table. And also, it's very interesting to see if the Saints are going to bring back A.J. Klein because A.J. Klein is an unrestricted free agent. So I'm interested to see if they're going to bring him back. Uh, Patrick Queen out of LSU, dog. Um, uh, Javion, I don't think that Patrick Queen is going to be there um, by the time the Saints pick. Um, I think that he's he's done enough to be um, a top 10 or top 15 pick. Um, I think that he's going to be going by the time the Saints pick. That, that would be a great pick for the Saints. But a lot of things would have to happen in order for the Saints to end up getting Patrick Queen. Um, he had a really good national championship game. Um, he played probably one of the best games he played all season. He he played it for the national championship, but I don't think he's going to be there. I think his draft stock went up because of how he played in the national championship game. But this list, once again, um, not too many people standing out on here. Uh, not at all. Like guys that I can just see that have immediate impact. Um, I guess you can say Bud Dupree, but I mean, he's going to cost a lot of money. Jamie Collins is also a guy that's going to cost a lot of money. Um, Reggie Ragland, I like him, but I think he's going to end up getting paid. I mean, these these guys are, are good, but I, I can't see immediate impact. But I mean... Did we know who Demario Davis was when he came over from the Jets? Not really. I didn't know that much about him. So, I mean, you could find a Demario Davis on this list. I guess it's just a matter of, uh, you know, scouting these guys and making the right decision. Uh, do do we agree defense is our biggest issue? Um, to be honest with you, I don't think defense is our biggest issue, not this time around. Um, should you, till we get a couple pieces um, to uh, solidify defense, kind of, you know, tighten it up a little bit? Absolutely, but I feel like the offense is the biggest issue. The offense has been sputtering over the past couple of years. The defense has been coming on and have been improving. Um, the only problem is with the defense, man, is trying to get guys in the secondary that can actually make plays in crucial situations. Uh, but as far as the offense, I mean, you got to get other people that's not named Michael Thomas to make plays and not named Alvin Kamara and not named Jared Cook. You need some other wide receivers out there that can make plays, and you also possibly can get another tight end that can uh, go on the other side of Jerry Cook. I'm not saying I don't like uh, Josh Hill. I think Josh Hill is a very classic type tight end, and he can also catch the football. But I think that the Saints need to get somebody that's kind of similar uh, to Jerry Cook that can also block. And maybe you can find this guy in the draft. I'm not, I don't know, maybe in the later rounds. I mean, George Kittle. I mean, he wasn't George Kittle when he was coming out of Iowa. I mean, he just kind of took the league by storm. So you can always find those diamonds in the rough. And I'm looking at this tight end list right now. You got Vance McDonald uh, for Pittsburgh. I can see him come, going back to Pittsburgh. Uh, Eric Ebron, I think he's done enough for the Indianapolis Colts to get a big contract. Uh, Vernon Davis, Jason Witten, I think those two guys are probably going to call it a career. I would say Tyler Eifert. I think that he he could be that guy that can go on the other side of, uh, of um, Jared Cook. But the problem is Tyler Eifert. Uh, is one of those guys that can't stay healthy. He he makes plays, but he can't stay healthy. Uh, Gary Selleck. Uh, Gary Selleck from the San Francisco 49ers. That would be a, a good pick as well. Uh, Mercedes Lewis, I think he's going to call it a career. Hunter Henry is a guy who I feel like the Chargers are going to uh, continue to uh, uh, have on their team. I think they're going to end up giving him and extend his contract. 
Looking at this list right now, the only person that I would say will give you should give opportunity to would be Tyler Eifert and Garrick Selleck. Um, Garrick Selleck is a guy who kind of um, hides in the shadows because Joyce Kittle kind of just took over. I think that his his uh, skill set can match up well with the New Orleans Saints. I feel like he's a he's a better version of a Josh Hill. Um, Thirty two years old, that his age is a little bit of a of a question mark for me. But uh, Tyler Eifert, I would like him in a New Orleans Saints uniform. Uh, maybe if he stays healthy, um, the Saints can have a great one-two punch at the tight end position. And I don't think that Tyler Eifert is going to cost a lot of money, especially since he has a career of uh, being injured. So a lot of teams will probably look at him as like, you know, you know, more risk than reward. So I think the Saints need to make a call and try to get uh, Tyler Eifert. Uh, besides that, I'm looking at I'm I'm just looking at this list up, up and down at the tight end position. Um, I guess you can throw Blake Jarwin in there, but I would be highly surprised if the Cowboys get rid of him. Thaddeus Moss would be a good pickup. Yeah, Thaddeus Moss would be a good pickup uh, for the New Orleans Saints. Uh, I like him a lot. He might be there around the third round. I think he might be there in the third round. So if, if he's there in the third round, the Saints may consider picking him up. Um, that would be a good pick. I actually like that. Um, but but Queen, um, I don't think he's going to be there. Any other positions that y'all want me to look at that I can run down? Any other positions? Uh, Drew and the New Orleans offense has peaked, and it's time to move on. We love Breeze, and we thank him for everything. Okay, But we need that Mahomes type quarterback back to get us over the hump of being a stagnant offense. Dwight, uh, that's a... That's a good statement that you made. You make a lot of good points. Um, a lot of people feel like uh, Drew Brees, uh, you know, time is up. It's time to get some new blood up in here. I, I get it. Uh, you know, I do think that the way that the league is going now, uh, you need a quarterback. If he's going to stand in the pocket, he needs the ability to scramble out of the pocket as well. Uh, the, the Kansas City Chiefs, make no mistake about it. They will not be Super Bowl champions if Patrick Mahomes didn't have the ability to scramble. There's been a couple times in that game where the pocket broke down and Patrick Mahomes had to make a play. He had to extend the play um, and also, you know, allow his receivers to go out there and make plays. And that's what you need. You need a you need a quarterback that can scramble out of pocket, need be. I'm not saying he got to be Michael Vick. I'm not saying he got to be Lamar Jackson. But he has to have that ability to scramble out of the pocket and also get the ball down the field. And sometimes you got to be able to improvise. You can't just count on the offensive line to block all the time because just like I often say, just like your offensive linemen get paid a lot of money to block for your quarterback, those defensive linemen get paid a lot of money to sack or try to disrupt your quarterback. So you need a quarterback that can go out there and try to extend plays and make things happen. And I just think that that's the way the league is going right now. But uh, as far as, you know, Drew Brees and moving on from him, I think that's, um, you know, I guess that's, uh, you know, the opinion of few uh, out there. But, you know, I mean, y'all already know where I stand as far as that. Uh, O.J. Howard, Marco, um, I don't think O.J. Howard is um, I don't think O.J. Howard is going to be a free agent. Um, most likely they're going to pick up his fifth year option and I think they're going to end up paying him down the line. Uh, what about cornerbacks? We really fall off after Lattimore. We can draft the safety and move C.J. Gardner-Johnson to corner. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend uh, moving C.J. Gardner-Johnson to the corner position on a full-time basis because I think you'll be limited in the young man. Um, I, think he, I think he shines and thrives at the safety position. Uh, he does really good at, you know, at the blitz. You know, coming off the blitz, he always seems to get home. He's a hard hitter. Um, he has really good ball instincts. So I don't think you should just limit him and say, oh, just, just make him a corner. I mean, he can play safety as well. I mean, when Von Bell went down and he was uh, mostly playing uh, safety throughout the games, he was doing a really good job out there. And he's only going to get better. Uh, but as far as the cornerback position, I mentioned that um, on the video. Um, I'll let you, you know, you can check out that video and let in, uh, in the video I'll let you know uh, what players I looked at. But I, I will look at the uh, cornerbacks and um, give my opinion on a few of them. Uh, the first person is Chris Harris Jr. I mean, we all know that he's a shutdown corner. He's going to get a lot of money. And I can't see the Denver Broncos uh, letting that guy leave. Uh, Jimmy Smith, 
uh, was a guy that I liked. Logan Ryan uh, is another guy that I like, but he's going to end up getting paid. Bradley Roby, um, up and two, up and down for me. Uh, Aqib Tlaib, I like him, but he's 34 years old. Ronald Darby, um, I just think that he was he was just a straight bust, man. I mean, they thought that he was going to be a guy that can come in and play uh, for the Philadelphia Eagles and make some noise, but he did absolutely nothing. Uh, Brandon Carr, 34 years old. Jermaine Williams, 37. Jonathan Joseph, no. Uh, Dorquez Denard. Um, he's probably going to get signed back because he's a leader uh, on the Bengals defense. Eli Apple, next. Uh, Jason, <laughs> Jason Verrett, uh, that's a guy that I, I look at, and he can possibly be the replacement for P.J. Williams. Um, just looking down his list, I don't really see anybody that stands out. Um, I see Brashad Breeland, who had a really good Super Bowl, but I need to see more. Um, yeah. Tremaine Brock is another guy that I feel like can come in and contribute. Uh, Kendall Fuller, uh, he's going to end up getting paid by Kansas City. And besides that, I'm not seeing anybody else that stands out. So uh, my my picks would be like Jimmy Smith and Jason Verrett. You know, those are two guys that I feel like can come in and play right away. Um, Jimmy Smith is a guy who played for the, the Ravens. Uh, for a long time, a really smart player, um, wasn't a shutdown corner, but he was a guy that can you can put him out there and he won't make many mistakes. And Jason Verrett, I mean, I know he was injured, um, you know, throughout his career, but uh, he's really good. And I think the, they lined him up on the outside quite a bit. He kind of struggled, but when you put him on the inside, I think he can really be good. So I think the Saints need to consider getting that guy. I hope PJ get the boot. Uh, most likely he will, man. Most likely he will. Uh, he's on a restricted free agent. I can't see the Saints trying to bring him back. Eli Apple garbage juice. <laughs> oh man, poor man, poor Eli Apple, man. This man can't get a break. But um, I, I don't think either one of those guys coming back. I think the Saints are going to go into a different direction. Um, I think that the Saints are going to end up drafting a cornerback. And I also think they're going to get one in free agency, and I think they're going to try their best to get Janoris Jenkins back. Um, I think, uh, me personally, if you can get Janoris Jenkins back, uh, you you have Marshawn Lattimore, and then you add somebody like Jason Verretta, Jimmy Smith in, in your secondary, I think you can uh, have a recipe for success. Mm, let's see, any other positions? I don't, I don't know. A wide receiver, cornerback, linebacker, that seems like that's a – that's a big need. Um, all other positions, I think the Saints need to look at in a draft. Uh, I already said the tight. We already looked at the tight end position. Uh, I, I just just for the sake of somebody just uh, mentioning this, um, I look at the guard position. I see Brandon Sheriff up there. I mean, he there's no way in the world the Redskins are going to get rid of this guy. Eric Flowers. I mean, he was just a straight one hundred percent bust. Uh, B.J. Uh, Finney, B.J. Finney, I don't see the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, getting rid of this guy. He's a really good guard. Uh, Mike Ayupati, um from Seattle, I think he's a really good guard, but he's 33 years old. Um, Andrews P., he's not coming back. Uh, and I honestly think that the Saints are happy with Nick Easton. How about trading for uh, Josh Jackson uh, from Green Bay? Um, Josh Jackson? Mm-hmm. I don't know about that one. I, I don't know. I don't know about Josh Jackson. I don't think a, a, a trade uh, would be good for as far as uh, Josh Jackson. I mean, he's a really good cornerback. I mean, he's twenty three years old, and I don't think that the uh, the Green Bay Packers are going to try to get rid of this guy. I mean, this guy's young, six one hundred ninety six pounds. I'm looking at um, the tail of the tape right now. They're not going to get rid of this guy. They're not. <laughs> Uh, he he has too much of a you know of an upside in order for them to get rid of him. So that's that's not happening. Uh, but I think I just think that the Saints uh, they if they get Janoris Jenkins and they have Lattimore and you get somebody like Jason Verrett who's like twenty six years old, I think they can be okay. Saints will draft a quarterback in the first round. That's what I think, Terrence. I think they're going to end up drafting a quarterback in the first round. I really do believe that. Uh, I know a lot of people are saying, like, I don't know, uh, maybe they shouldn't do it, but 
if you got a guy that can possibly be the future of your franchise, why not? I mean, we seen. I mean, I mean, this is a copycat league. It's a copycat league. Everybody right now is looking for the next Patrick Mahomes. That's what they're looking for. So if a guy got elite arm strength and they can throw the ball down the field, all coaches are looking for it. Just like last year, um, everybody wanted the next Sean McVay. Everybody wanted that young, uh, you know, vibrant, offensive-minded coach. And now, you know, everybody wants that guy with the rocket arm, you know, like Patrick Mahomes. It's a copycat league, folks. That's just what it is. Uh, but I want to say thank you all for checking out the State of the Saints podcast Facebook uh, live. Thank you all for your questions. If you have any more questions, you think of something in the middle of the day, you can always inbox me uh, your questions. And, you know, I might not be able to get back to you right away, but I'll try my best to respond to your questions. And also, if you have a topic for the show, uh, please uh, inbox that as well. And also, if you like YouTube, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com, search the State of the Saints podcast, and also the spinoff podcast of the State of the Saints called the State of the Game podcast. Uh, YouTube.com search the State of the Game podcast. You got to put the entire name of the show in or it's not going to come up. Um, it's just starting out, so it might be kind of hard to find. I need your support in order for that channel to grow. Uh, thank you all very much for your support once again of, of the State of the Saints podcast. And until next time, all I got to say is, who that?